In the fight against climate change, billions of dollars have been pledged to save the world's forests. Each year, an area the size of England is being deforested, sending enormous amounts of carbon dioxide into the atmosphere. Experts believe reducing that rate of deforestation may be one of the cheapest and most effective ways of combating climate change. A scheme called Reducing Emissions from Deforestation and Forest Degradation, or RED, is being championed as a possible solution. The idea behind RED is um, we need to keep the forest standing and avoid the deforestation which will emit carbon dioxide into the atmosphere. And by avoiding this deforestation, we are therefore contributing to the slowing of climate change. Basically, this, this avoided deforestation would be done through payments to uh, forest-rich countries, mainly located in the tropical belt around the world, to, um, to not cut down their forest, to compensate them for the loss of using the timber or extracting the timber or using the value of the forests. While experts agree that RED has great potential in theory, making it work on the ground in developing countries will be tough. Many of these nations have weak governments that often struggle to provide even basic services to their people. Still, about 40 developing countries are already preparing policies and laws for RED, and this has created an urgent need to figure out how RED may best work on the ground. In an effort to do this, teams of researchers linked to the Center for International Forestry Research have been working in South America, Africa and Asia. In the Amazon, a team of six has been trying to understand what lessons can be learned from a project called Bosa Floresta, which pays families 50 rias each month, the equivalent of about $33, to safeguard the forests. And the main purpose of this is basically to know uh, how these payments are contributing to the household subsistence and lifestyles, and also in a way to actually understand a bit more about their ways of living here. You know, are they making enough money from the forest? Do they actually take products from the forest? What is their main source of income? Is it planting manioc or is it fishing or is it hunting? And then on top of that, we do several community surveys and women's surveys where we gather groups, focus groups, to talk to them about their knowledge of red, about some of the agricultural crops that they grow, maximum and minimum prices, salaries for them. This is all to try and understand a bit more about the socio-economic situation of the people here. Oh. Paying the stipends to families is just one component of Bolsa Floresta. Others focus on improving education and healthcare, providing livelihood support and facilitating community empowerment. While its impact is still being felt on a small scale relative to the vast size of the Amazon, the vision for Bosa Floresta is much bigger. Bosa Floresta is a, a mechanism to change an old dream and make that come true. And the dream was to have forests being valued uh, for the services they provide. Não, não pode porque com como é que é? Não pode matar uma caça, né? Para comer. Não pode trabalhar para comprar uma coisa produzir, não pode. When we designed uh, this uh, program in uh, 2007, uh, this was uh, an opportunity we saw to contribute both to the international debate showing that red is doable is something that can happen on the ground and also was something to uh, create a short-term result for the Amazon society. We have received a number of visitors from Africa, from Latin America, from Asia, from Indonesia, uh, who is responded to me saying, well, we see that this approach that uh, you have designed it makes sense to us. So for me, RED has to have this holistic approach. Otherwise, it will not change the course of history, not only throughout the Amazon, but throughout the world. It is still too early to gauge the impact of the project, but preliminary surveys look promising. 
Communities that receive Bolsa Floresta have reported a better standard of living, and overall rates of deforestation have declined. In the meantime, until we know its true impact over the long term, Bolsa Floresta is providing valuable lessons as to how communities actually use the forest and how red can motivate people to protect forest resources. The idea behind PES is to be an incentive to people. So this amount of money should be an incentive for them not to deforest. But the problem that we, we can see with a lot of other programs as well is that sometimes that incentive is not big enough to be an incentive. Instead, it's just a supplement to the income. Another challenge is how do we actually create an effective monitoring system? When you're dealing with communities that are so isolated and so far apart, you aren't um, able to, as, as one organisation, to have a presence in every single community. I mean, some of the communities that we visited, we're talking 15 hours by boat, at least. And that's, that's a very long way to go to stay for a little while, see what's going on and then go back. I mean, and also enforcement and monitoring can't be just a snapshot. Like one day a year, it needs to be ongoing. But having strong law enforcement may not necessarily be the answer. People don't deforce because they're stupid. They deforce because they're smart. And they deforce because of a logic, an economic logic. So we have to change that economic equation. So it's not an issue of law enforcement. It's an issue of economics and education. The biggest challenge to enforce legislation is to make people aware. You cannot expect a person who is largely illiterate, who has had no argument about management of natural resources, to comply to a law that he or she cannot read and doesn't have access to it. So I think if we give them the options, first to understand the law, and second to understand the logic of the law, and third to learn about alternatives, then we can win the game. Despite the challenges, red is perhaps our best hope to reshape the way forests are managed and protected. The mechanism may not be perfect, but hopes are high that it will protect millions of hectares of forests from being chopped down. Researchers like Riong are working around the world to try to figure out how best to make it happen. This type of research that C4 is doing in other projects, it's a start into understanding exactly how payments can actually help and also into understanding how we can make it better and more effective and more efficient. I know that there are these challenges and I know that there's a really long way to go but it's the most effective way to uh, minimise the impacts of global warming in a very sh short time frame.